Well, welcome everybody to another episode of Clarity TV. My name is Dolores Hirschman, and I'm excited to bring you more clarity for yourself and your business. Today, we have an amazing brand new friend, but we've known each other for just a few months, but we've become very close very fast. That's kind of how it works in my life. And her name is Mercedes Guzman. Mercedes is the creator of the ICLP process. And it's a powerful technique to, I'm, I'm reading from here because otherwise I, I can't remember all the wonderful things Mercedes says, but it's a powerful technique to reconnect and heal your inner child. She's an inspirational speaker, coach, and author. She has worked with thousands of people around the world, helping from them heal from their past and transform their lives. Mercedes has been featured in Forbes magazine, radio shows, television such as CNN in Español, Telemundo, Univision, AIV, Televisa, Emprendedora magazine, and Mundo Hispanico. Welcome, welcome, Mercedes. Thank you so much for taking time today. For me, it's a pleasure to be in front of you and, like you say, to have more clarity in our life. I love Clarity TV, and you are that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And, you know, I, I found your information online, and what struck me in your profile, and actually LinkedIn, was this concept of the inner child. And so we're really gonna talk about that a lot. So let me ask you this. Tell me about a project, an experience, or an accomplishment that you consider to be one of the most significant in your life. For me is to realize who was running my show. Okay, and when I say this, uh, you can have a lot of accomplishment in your life, but if you have not gone inside of you and realize where the pain is coming from, why you are acting the way you have to, why you are repeating the same mistakes when you know better. And uh, for me, was when I have my fourth child, I was becoming really an insane person. And I did not like myself. I was in a position where I woke up, I wake up many days saying another day God of suffering really and that's when I start asking for help and I someone introduced me this man that was doing inner child regressions and I knew that my problem was psychologically. I knew I was smart enough to understand that. And when he was not a psychologist or psychiatrist, he was a very spiritual man that had a lot of knowledge about uh, the psychology, psychology work. And when he took me into my childhood in a very meditative state, in a meditation state, that's when I realized what was going on and why I was acting that way. And that's one of my biggest accomplishments to really uh, heal my inner child and now helping thousands of people around the world to do the same. And I love, you know, this concept that I think all of us can, can find or pinpoint a moment in our lives where continuing in the patterns or continuing surviving or living the life as we had been until that moment, it would no longer work. And that for you in that moment, you know, you had already had three children. This was the fourth child. There wasn't anything new. You know, you already were a mother, but something in that fourth child and when that fourth child was born made you realize that every the way that you were operating, the way that you were living your life until that moment would no longer work with this new member of your family. That something had to change and you were smart enough to understand that it wasn't that the outside had to change, you had to go inside. Because I think a lot of people who are listening, the first reaction when something is not going well or where you feel like, you know, life is no longer sustainable, usually people go and look at the outside 
and say, okay, I need a new husband or I need a new job or we need to move to a new city or, you know, I need to give a child away. I don't know if that's not, but, um, <laughs> but, but I mean, you, we really look at the outside to fix the problem that we're feeling inside. And I love that you said that you were smart enough to know that the first place for you to look at and say, okay, what needs to be readjusted was inside of you. So that said, I, I suspect the next question will kind of be answered by, by this response you just gave us. But what has been always with you? Um, can you think of like a common denominator uh, a trait or a belief or a resource that if you think through your life in times where things were not so easy or, or, or it got, you know, the, 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 the journey got hard, what was something that you always could count on? I think it's my positive attitude. And um, the, okay, I grew up, in a country that was devastated by war between the guerrillas and the, and the army in my country. I didn't know when, if I would be alive the next day. And I grew up in the middle of that. My parents did not have money. We were what you call poor people. Uh, what saved me was that I, I went to a very high education because the nuns were, was accept, they were accepting underprivileged kids and um, education free you. So you really are exposed to good education. You have the power to make decisions, okay? And um, one of the things that I saw, it was that no matter what was going on in the house, within the environment, we will have to go the next day to the marketplace and sell the goods. If not, we will not be able to eat or pay the bills. Okay, it was something that I saw daily. You will be maybe in a place and then you will all of a sudden hear a bomb detonate, will kill people, and then 30 minutes later, you have to be working back into your feet because okay, that, was, and that was the life that I lived. And then a positive attitude. My dad was a very positive man. He would read, uh, he didn't read very well, but he would make me read the positive uh, uh, daily uh, that was in the newspaper. And he will say, Merceditas, come and read me the positive message for the day. And I think that that's one of the things that have stayed with me and have helped me to overcome many of my challenges. I, lo I love that because I think, you know, and, and, and for some of us, it's hard to imagine living in a place where you don't even know if you're going to be alive the next day, right? And for some of us, you know, I, I grew up in Argentina. I think sometimes we're difficult, but we always had some food on the table and that's not true for everybody around the world. And it just, just having food on the table is something that you question. And I love that you focus or your father taught you to focus on how you feel by, by feeling positive. You were able to always tap into that to keep on going. So thank you. Thank you. I love that. Let me ask you, let me ask about your work. What is, the core idea of the work that you do and what is the impact that you want to have in this world? One of the things that I, I question myself is why am I repeating these same things when I know better? Why I was hitting my children, why I was screaming at my babies if I knew books that tell me how to handle those things, I did not understand. And the core of my message is how to go into my childhood, unlock and unblock patterns that were imposed in my subconscious mind by parents that they did not know better because my parents had it worse. Okay, and then that's the message. It's not about dancing and acting like a little child. No, it's 
the core message is how can I become the mother, mentor, father of my inner child? How can I become that space where my little girl find out that everything that was going on around her wasn't her fault? How to share this beautiful knowledge that I have with my inner child and tell her that she is innocent, that they abused, because I was abused, uh, sexually abused when I was 10 years old, was not her fault. Okay? And that, that has been a beautiful journey and that's my core message that I send to others, that they can be parents of their inner child. And let me ask you this, what happens when, you know, I hear you, like for you, it was about, you knew better, you knew by the book, you, you were aware of how to parent your children well, but, but nevertheless, you found yourself in situations where you were not the best parent. You know, some of us, we, whatever we are struggling with, whether it's things that we do at work where we self-sabotage or addiction or um, anything that we do that in our intellectual mind, we know there's a better way, but somehow we still do that. So let me ask you this, Mercedes, what is possible for all of us and what was possible for you when you recognize that that pattern that you want to disrupt that you want to stop is really being run by someone or something inside of us and when that can be healed or yeah healed or managed what is possible in our life what is possible uh there is that there is not uh barriers for you to grow as an adult for me it was to create the body that I created, not the body. Okay, when I'm, I'm saying because I, I, I had some of, uh, pounds over in my body and I was creating this body that was the reflection of my mom and I didn't know that I was doing that at a very unconscious level. Okay, one is you can create the body that you dis deserve. You can create the health that you desire. Okay, because many times... The only way that you saw your mother was that she was sick and maybe that's the only way that she received love and you learned that when you were a child and then you grew up creating sickness and it's not your sickness, okay? But it's possible you can have a marriage that works. You are not going to be able to see your partner not through the eyes of that child seeing mommy and daddy fighting but you can really see the man or the woman that is in front of you really see them but it's possible to have a beautiful relationship with your kids and not to worry knowing that they are children of life and then to have that peace knowing that that they're going to be okay um what is possible to create an a financial sustainable financial and living in an abundance feelings of love and prosperity because your inner child is not running your show like uh, my inner child did it with me i grew up in the marketplace where we have aprons and we will sell food and i will grab the money and put it on on the little bags that were there and at the end of the day we will put the money in front of my mother and count the money to hear oh today was a bad day we don't have money. And my poor mother, even though she saw the money, we do not have money. And then when I, what, I married my husband, we came to the United States, he's from Corpus Christi, he has a good job, he didn't make money. Guess what I was saying? There's no money. And there's no money. And there's no money. And I, I, I was teaching that to my children, even though they want something, very easily will something comes out of my mouth and I would say, no, there's no money. And there was money. Mm -hmm. Okay, now 
I live in an abundance universe and I feel so blessed because we do live in an abundant universe, but we were not taught that when we were growing up. Yes, and I think I'm sure a lot of people listening to you resonate with this is that what we tell ourselves in our head many, many times doesn't really reflect the life we have, but we continue, if you want, we perpetrate these stories. Um, whether it's a story of luck or the story not enough money, not enough love, not enough, not enough, we are not enough. Um, whatever it is that story that we are telling in our head, it might not, not actually be the truth, it might not be real, but the more we tell that story, we cannot see our reality and we cannot enjoy or live our reality. And it, you know, how many times you see someone grow old and they're still complaining about things that they think they don't have, but if they really look at their life, they actually do have them. Correct. Uh, there is a saying that people don't die because of the truth, but by their belief. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the brain has been programmed to see only pain and disaster and anger and abandonment, you move in life and then your brain will focus only on that what you are programmed to see <laughs> and when we go in because that's what i do I, when i have a client we go into their path and we uh, because as an adult we have more knowledge we already know better and then if we go with my help and you as an adult, and we go and see what the little girl or little boy went through in every area of their life, you will tell that little kid, I'm sorry, but what you believe at that moment was not that true, it wasn't true. You are enough. I'm sorry that the adults didn't know better because the kid believe that adult knows better. Yeah. Yeah, so they yeah, yeah, and that's and that's and you create, we we create the the filter through which we see the world, and until we are able to transform or change that filter, those that lens, we really can't see world for what it is, right? Or a new version of it. Um, we are building the Clarity TV library. So, what is one book? that you would think we should all read? For me, there is many, but um, in my beginnings, and I, I wanna clarify something, okay? You can learn a lot. You can become a doctor in a lot of books, but if you forget your inner child, all this knowledge will go down the drain. Okay, and I'm telling you because that's what I did. I read, I, I informed myself, and I, and I did a lot of meditation and prayer, and I was, you know, this good person, but I have forgotten my inner child. And then the book that I'm going to share with you is one of my favorites, The Seven Habits of a Highly Effective People by Steve Cobb. That's uh, one of my favorites. Seven um, the seven habits of, of um, highly effective. I mean, I've, I, I haven't read it. I've heard of it a lot, of course. I actually, I might even have it, um, but um, I'll make sure to read that book next. <laughs> um, so Mercedes, if someone who's listening finds themselves repeating patterns they say to themselves oh i've already been in this situation or i've already kind of dealt with this crisis or this drama and they're really understanding well maybe there's something more to this maybe it's not just changing a behavior but maybe i have to change something deep inside like connecting with the inner child and and hugging that inner child right so if they're thinking that where should they go and find more about you okay i have my uh, website it's called mercedes guzman g-u-z-m-a-n.com 
think there is a button there that is in English and it will take you to the English uh, site. And uh, uh, my book is going to be, uh, I, I already um, published my book in Spanish, but the English version is coming on in July. I'm so excited about that. Yes. Perfect. And send us a link and we'll put the link in the show notes. So before we end our conversation today, what do you want to add? I just want to tell you that you deserve to have everything that your heart desires. That you are worthy, you are loved, you belong, that whatever you are putting up there, it will come back to you. The only thing that I will highly, highly advise is to look into your inner child and give her or him the same message. Tell that beautiful being inside of your uh, emotional body that she or he is safe and that you promise him or her that will not let them in the past, that you will bring them in the present so your life can transform to the highest that you deserve. That would be my message. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you, Mercedes, for your time today. And make sure you check out Mercedes's work. You can find her on YouTube. Go to her website, Mercedes Guzman, M-E-R-C-E-D-E-S-G-U-Z, man.com check her out mercedesguzman.com thank you and uh, i can't wait to read your book in spanish and then i can read it in english as well <laughs> thank you thank you everybody bye bye